And this video is a continuation from the previous message about our devotion to the golden calf and the reasons for which we suffer from a blurred vision. This video is a conclusion to that message. Aaron saw his brother coming down from the mountain with something in his hand that was not made by man and immediately Aaron came face to face with his sin and within himself knew that the golden calf and what his brother has in his hand cannot go together the same way we have to drop our secret character which is not in conformity with the mighty grace of our Christ and he gave us Isaiah chapter 44 verses 18 to 28 which says they have not known nor understood for he have shut their eyes that they cannot see and their hearts that they cannot understand and none considereth in his heart neither is their knowledge nor understanding to say i have burned part of it in the fire yea also i have baked bread upon the coals thereof i have roasted flesh and eaten it and shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? He feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that saith to Jerusalem thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof that saith to the deep be dry and I will dry up thy rivers that saith to Cyrus he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure even saying to Jerusalem thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid Amen and I would like to share with you the interpretation that the Holy Spirit of our Christ came to give concerning this Isaiah chapter 44 verses 18 to 28 and he said he has come to bring the brain that is dull into his reality. When the people of God come to him, they may hear his voice, but some may doubt it. Because many of us have in our hands things of this world, we have not abandoned it. People of God do not know what it is all about. And day to day, we compare him, the living God, to things of this world. The God who spoke and turned their seas into blood. And we compare the God of the Hebrews to the gods of Egypt? You are fascinated by their dancing. And people of God are wishing they were like them, proclaiming what they have achieved and acquired. And then by doing so, your gold is being shed on the wood you have cut for yourself. You go to the bush and you cut wood to fry fish on the fire. You eat 
and the wood that is left over, you gather to yourself and worship. And you say is your God. For the spirit of our Christ is saying that when he speaks, every hair on the back of your head has to stand. But we have given all unto the piece of wood in our lives. How can someone who is so wise behave so foolishly? But we have gone astray and have no understanding. We make the residue our governors. People of God promote themselves. They have no spirit of obedience in them. No spirit of humility. Placarding what they have achieved. The God you are serving is God who confirms the word of his servants. Saying the true servant of the living Christ only speaks what he has heard his father in heaven say because God is in him. And the strength of the spirit of truth, the spirit of our Christ continued in saying, what you are delighted in will not show you the right way. What you are delighted in is what shall make you feeble. These are the things that are attracting the people of God. Look, you need not give yourself unto their way of life. And the spirit of our Christ continued in saying, whosoever says they have seen God but believes in himself or in herself has a long way to go. As a child of God, you need not fascinate yourself with your neighbor's progress. Wait your turn. God knows why a banana is curved. If God has created you to be an orange, you cannot curve yourself like the banana. The living spirit of our Christ is saying, wait your turn. For yours shall come. Wait on God. And the Holy Spirit continued. And he expressed the pain in the hearts of the servants of God. And he said, the servant of God is weak. But know that your God shall never despise you. You shall be faced with many uncertainties and predicaments. It's no smooth ride, but remember, your craft shall land without a hitch. It is God who has sent you. Let not these feelings persuade you from moving from your place God has given you. For there shall come a time that the message that you are hearing shall come to stand before you to ask you, what did you do with the message that you heard? The word that is coming to you now may not have flesh on it, just bones. But within your spirit, you know that it's the spirit of Christ speaking to you. For Master Jesus is saying, turn and I shall support you in your turning. Why should you allow the world and its evil ways entice you? When you come face to face, with the right spirit of God. He shall not demand from you, but rather add to you. What is it that has fascinated you that you have forgotten your name? For when the spirit of God is in you, you see the writing on the wall and understand which step you should take next. Unless the chosen spirit of God has descended upon you, you cannot come out of the tomb they have placed you in. God being merciful has come to make sure you do not kneel before the piece of wood you use to fry your fish. Many shall be in denial and many shall be upset at the fact that they've been directed to listen to this video because now the word of God will make man to come face to face with their sins. There's no escape. For the spirit of the mighty son of God has come that man might have a change and be reconciled back unto his maker. And he continued by giving us 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21. And it says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, 
follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. And the interpretation of the Holy Spirit of our Christ came to say, How long shall you have a divided mind? Elijah came face to face with them. Them who thought the piece of wood is performing for them. And God is saying, how long are you going to be in your current state? Promoting yourself when God is saying, be submissive. And I shall call you my own. When the time has come to make the choice that God is presenting before you, you're quiet, as the scripture has said. How long are you going to be the way you are? Not of Elijah's mind, but the Holy Spirit through Elijah asked. And they were quiet because they were not sure what is of God and what wasn't of God. God is saying, where you are, it's not where I want you to be. And he's also saying, if you're serving Baal, then serve him. But know this very thing, that you shall be brought to naught. But if you know God is the living God and there's none besides him, who alone, whose name is Yahweh, then serve him. For he will not share his glory with anyone. And he said, you cannot have me and the charcoal at the same time, says the Lord. The piece of wood cannot serve me. The piece of wood cannot do my will. It is not by struggle, debate or argument. If you are so attracted to bow to make a change, know there shall come a time. The day of accountability shall come. For the things that you believe in and are investing your trust in, they have eyes but cannot see. They have mouths but cannot speak. Noses have they but they cannot breathe. But the word has breath to breathe and breath to give. The choice you make shall either be to your joy or be to your hurt. What decision shall you make today? Elijah did not mince his words with his mother-in-law. He did not mince his words with the sorcerers and the witches, but said it straight as according to the strength of God given unto him. My brothers and sisters, know where you stand. Listen, he said, you shall prosper because God said so. You do not prosper because of the piece of wood. For the piece of wood will demand from you and you will not be able to pay it back. The Holy Spirit through Elijah put the ball in our courts. Elijah knew the word coming from him is the word that shall change the course of many. So the warning has come. Do not let the delectable things influence you. Examine the position that you hold as a child of God, for it was given to you by God. So do not manhandle your neighbor. Be not proud, but know that the Holy Spirit has put the ball in your court to check and see if you will continue to manhandle your neighbor. And now the word has come to say, if by manhandling your neighbor is right to you, then do it. As the Holy Spirit said through Elijah, if you exalt yourself, you will be humbled. The word through Elijah came and said, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if bow, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. If you know what you're believing in is prostitution, if you know what you're believing in is booty call, and this is your God, the word has now come to say is, follow it. For many of the people of God were shocked when the word of God came for Elijah to say this, that if it's Baal, then follow him. Because that was not the message that the people was expecting to hear. Like many who are listening now, they're not expecting to hear this word. And the Holy Spirit said, 
The servant of God is required to speak what God has said. Nothing less and nothing more. My brothers and sisters, let us turn together to Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 to 17. And he said, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. Amen. And the Holy Spirit went on to say, If you have seen, and you have truly seen, this God, the true God, the living God, and there is none like him, and you claim that you know that there's none like him, why are you so quick to follow these gods on the other side of the flood? You are in danger of allowing the Holy Spirit to harm you. In other words, every promise that he's declared unto you, he's withdrawing it back. And he said, you cannot handle the Hebrews God according to your own style. He is not God who is begging you. Elijah said, why, in other words, are you still here and there? Why are you still tivering? And now the word through Joshua is saying, if you stop serving him, this living God, God will not change. He will continue to be God. He is God who does not change, but changes all things. Make your choice. And the magnificent spirit of our Christ said something. He said, what you see your neighbor doing, be not fascinated. For there shall come a time you shall do more than him. And he continued by saying, Jesus said, if you believe in me, you shall do more than what you see me do. Do not be fascinated by what you see your neighbor doing, for you shall do more than what you see your neighbor doing, says the Lord. Be not fascinated when your neighbor says, look at my big house. It was from my inheritance. It was from my parents' will. And when a child of God hears this, they jump into their spirit immediately. In other words, saying, what about me? Oh, beloved of God. It is not by being fast that you shall win the race, but by God you shall win. Day of this world shall come. They will even be bold to come before you to entice you. But Jesus says, the meek shall inherit the earth. Do not judge your brother, for the same measure for which you judge your own brother, the same shall be used to judge you. Do not judge the poor, for you do not know the package that he or she has for you. If this message profits you, then think about where you are standing. For if you can hear the cry of the sandals underneath your feet, then you have heard God. You're not hearing the cry of the wall because you are too busy throwing a ball at it, the parables of our Christ. In other words, he's saying, the sandals underneath your feet is crying because of the weights that you're placing on it. Meaning, people of God have become insensitive they lack remorse, they have no feeling, they do not identify when they're offending or breaking the hearts of those who are around them. 
cannot hear the cry coming from the wall because they're too busy throwing a ball at, ball at it. In other words, meaning they're too busy throwing evil words. They're too busy using words to suppress and oppress others. They're not identifying the damage that they're causing. So they're not hearing the cry. But if you can hear the cry, know that Jesus is drawn closer to you. He also gave us Psalm 135 verse 3 and it says praise the Lord for the Lord is good sing praises unto his name for it is pleasant amen and the Holy Spirit said there's nothing that you can show to God that shall make him change his mind concerning his word you can be a smooth talker which convinces other others but it shall not convince him. You may even go and get plastic surgery and it usually works with others. You convince others, but it shall not convince him. God is saying, I am saying, I will not change my mind. If you come in beauty, I more. If you come in excellence, I more. So drop what you have in your hand that you may receive my blessings. That pride, that arrogance, let go. And Master Jesus gave us 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 5, which says, In stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labours, in watchings, in fastings. And he said, It is not going to be roses, merrymaking. God is saying, grab it secure it as you're hearing this message and it shall be something that you have that the world shall seek for but cannot find it but you have it for many who are saying the same thing that joshua said that i and my house will serve the lord the holy spirit came to say you shall see many who call themselves friends, but truly shall not be a friend unto you, but hypocrites, says your heavenly father. God is saying, do not indulge yourself in their way of behavior. Separate yourself. Separate yourself from the hypocrites. Separate yourself from the nepotism. Separate yourself from the hatredness. Separate yourself from the jealousies. Separate yourself from the lasciviousness. Separate yourself, says the Father. And he also gave us the same 2 Corinthians chapter 6, but this time the verse 17, which says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And his Holy Spirit came to say, those who are finding it difficult to stop the self-promotion, God is saying, turn from them. And he continued by saying, why is it taking you time for you to know that your life is not in conformity with the Spirit of God? That self-upliftment does not come from God. There are many that heard but did not understand. And he went on to say, the journey has started. There's no turning back. However you see, however you hear, God is saying, drop what you have in your hand. The same way Aaron saw his brother coming down from the top of the mountain with something special in his hands, he knew in that moment he had to drop what he had in his hand to receive what his brother had. The same way the Holy Spirit of our Christ is saying, drop what you have in your hand for the Holy Spirit of our Christ has come to give you what Master Jesus has given him to give to you. And our loving Father concluded by giving us Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, which says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. The book of Kings said, Why are you torn between two opinions? 
the book of Joshua said, choose which God you will serve. Now the author himself, the word himself, through the book of Matthew is saying, you cannot serve God and mammon. May the true understanding of our Christ make you a brand new man and make you a brand new woman this day and forevermore. May he be the tom-tom in your life to guide and lead you onto your destination that he prepared before the foundation of the world was formed. In Jesus' name, amen.